your operator is bought in the Special Infantry Tree. It comes in all the nations. Out of the 10 special points, it costs 4 of those, so it's a significant chunk and it costs a 15 CP, which is quite significant for the 3 guys you get. You get 2 SMG guys, and then obviously the radio operator. The radio operator is special is because it has the artillery signal gun. So when you click on that, you need to use this in DC, press DC, then you can see it has a range of about 60. So if I fire this, basically what it does, it shoots 5 signal flares, and the explosion will basically happen where those red, red signals are. Press I while that's going, you can see my ammo is 45, so it comes with an ammo of 50. Well there you go, these explosions can be quite devastating for anything there, but um, it's a signal in fact, so the enemy can quite easily see it coming. Buying a radio op is something you should consider quite carefully. Because it comes in the special unit tree, you don't regain special unit special points when you buy something in this tree, so it costs four special points. For in Germans, for example, you can't afford a Red or Tiger if you buy a radio op, so that will um, stop you from buying this in the whole game. <laughs> uh, some good combos though, if you want to go the radio op, is get the Veteran Sniper, Brandenburger, then the radio op, then the Brandenburger. This will enable you to utilize the best German infantry available in the special tree. <clears throat> radio op should not be bought in 1v1s, or maybe even 2v2s. 3v3s and up, I say it has its use in certain maps where you can shoot over arcs and over hills. If you're fighting heavy tanks and you have some special points spare and you can think you can track a tank and destroy it, the radio op is definitely a good investment. The radio operator is a very fragile unit for its price. For 4 points, this guy is very very valuable and can get killed by anything on the field. Uh, in its use, basically you have to make sure you use it behind cover, where you can't get shot at by anything. A good way to actually, I suppose, find your targets is get some infantry out there to scout. So once you spot what you want to fire at, for example, a good radio up target is, I suppose, you could use it to destroy sandbags and fortifications. Emplacements are also good to destroy, such as anti-tank guns or stationary MGs. So I just go over here, I've got this house to go over, and I'll just shoot. So in this case here, it's quite slow to actually escape. So if I was the pack 40, I'll have to escape quite quickly. The infantry may escape, but you can see here, the sandbags will be all destroyed, and the pack 40 died that time. Uh, sometimes the enemy may not be looking in that location, and in that case the pack 40 would have definitely not escaped. Um, you may get lucky though to take out full infantry squads as well, but the main purpose of this is to destroy fortified areas. Verstanden. Where the radio up really shines is in its indirect effect on the enemy and what they build and bring to the field. Verstanden. Basically, if you have a radio up on the field, um, any enemy tanks uh, will be very defensive. Let's say, if I had a Tiger on the field and there's a radio op, I would not dare to put it down in a flag to cover very close, or behind um, an area where there's a building that a radio op can shoot over, or a hill. If I had a Tiger here, I would not put the radio, I would not go this close because the radio op is over here. The reason for this is, um, yeah, you can quite easily get tracked by anything. So if you're tracked, that means you're pretty much mince meat for the radio op. In some examples, if you're the Soviets, um, a good combo is to go the KV-1, and then um, it, that if you put the KV-1 very far away, nothing can penetrate it um, easily, and you can just use the KV-1 to try track tigers or things like that, and then the radio op can finish it off. <clears throat> but as I said again, um, it will basically in really um, high competitive games, no one will be silly enough to bring that close by with a radio op. So in fact. I would have to use my tanks very defensively with the radio ops on the field, in fear of being tracked and being shot. So you can see here how powerful the blast is. In this case, this Tiger is tracked, and once it's tracked, it can be a sitting duck for the radio op. See the massive damage it will do, and it takes out the engine. This is a King Tiger, by the way, it's no, um, no crappy tank there. So this expensive guy can be taken out by a four-pointer infantry.
The radio op also can be used to take out things in your way. For example, let's say you have a big MG line and flak um, 20mm defense here, and it can't shoot because all of, all of these buildings in the way, and you want it to have a clear line of sight. Or you have an AT gun here which you want to cover the whole map. The radio op can destroy buildings quicker, and I suppose without, without much risk because you're shooting from far away instead of having to go there and dynamite it. It is a bit of a waste of a flare, but uh, if you want things done quickly in the heat of the moment, you can take out buildings quickly.